Hey guys, welcome to Barry the Terrible. Today I forgot Maleficent Prophecy featuring our Hisuian Bravery and Hisuian Typhlosion combo. We're using Typhlosion for the V-Star power and only for the V-Star attack. We're planning on using Eerie Cry and also Mimikyu's worst gift attack to collect the first two knockouts and then after that, finish off the game with our Shimmering Star, knocking out one of our opponent's active Pokemon by doing a boss or Serena or if they already have an active with damage counters on it, we can actually play our Painful Spoons to transfer those damage counters onto the bench, reducing the damage counter on that Pokemon until you have exactly 4 damage counters on it. If it has exactly 4 damage counters on it, we can actually use the effect of Shimmering Star's attack to basically do an instant knockout with our V-Star power. So all we need is to attack with Bravery's Eerie Cry twice in a row after placing damage counters on their bench, spreading those damage counters with our uh, Haolucha's Flying Entry ability, placing one damage counter on any two of our opponent's bench Pokemon, uh, you know, with this ability as you put it onto the bench for each copy that you put. Uh, we also have our Spectriere to do Night Footsteps, choosing any two of our opponent's Pokemon and placing two damage counters on both of them with an attack. It is a Psychic, uh, one Psychic Energy cost attack and we actually are playing nothing but Psychic Energies for this deck and we have our four crystals to summon our psychic energy for Mimikyu to attack as well but the main way we are uh, spreading the damage counter is obviously with Haolucha's ability and of course with this attack and also spreading the damage with our Radiant Alakazam's Painful Spoons allow us to hit more Pokemons with our Eerie Cry putting three damage counter on at least four Pokemons at a time and that means we have at least 16 damage counters on our first strike and our second, uh, after doing Eerie Cry the second time, we would essentially be able to do a VMAX knockout already with our worst gift for the first strike. And then for the second strike, we can do a boss Serena to target a V-Star to knock it out with, uh, you know, having eight, uh, four... 8 damage counters on any one of their Pokemon, we we just need about 200 damage to kill off the second Pokemon to draw this, uh, the, you know, the third and the fourth prize and all we need is one final V knockout with our Shimmering Star to finish off the game by drawing the last two prizes. So how do we charge up our Mimikyu though? Because he needs two energies, one Psychic and one Colorless to be able to play this attack, hitting 10 damage for each damage counter on all of our opponent's Pokemon combined. So he's doing a lot of damage, but we do have to satisfy the attack cost for us to play the attack. And we have our Thornton to basically transform our Haolucha on the bench into a Mimikyu. After discarding it, we do have to think about discarding Mimikyu, but we have Ultra Ball and Serena for the discard. It's quite easy to do that. We also have one Experience and one Raihan just in case we are able to bench a Mimikyu. If they do a boss knock it out, we can do a Thornton later, but if we have an energy attached to our Haolucha early game, if we don't get to summon our Mimikyu, if we have a Haol we do have to bench our Haolucha first to be able to play the ability, so it's always a, a better idea to be able uh, to attach, to think about attaching your energies onto your Haolucha and then play a Thornton later to transform into Mimikyu. We have three copies of this card and only one Raihan with one experience share. So for your first Mimikyu, it's always better to transform with Thornton uh, from the Haolucha because they wouldn't be expecting that and if you do that you can freely attach one energy at a time from your hand while attacking with your bravery because bravery does not need any energies for you to use this attack early game and that means you are free to attach from your hand onto your bench Haolucha preparing for the transformation onto your Mimikyu to do worst give twice in a row because you you are actually required to play this attack uh, two turns straight to do double knockout double V knockout in a row uh, after collecting enough damage counters with your Eerie Cry. So how do we do double knockout though? Because if we do the first knockout, we may not have enough damage counters in the game, in our opponent's field, to do the second knockout with another Mimikyu. So we do have to be smart with this. We have to be smart with our damage counter placement. We have to be smart with our damage counter transfer. If we can do our first knockout against the VMAX, then we don't need to worry about the second knockout. We can quite easily finish off the second Pokemon on the bench. Uh, you know, we would have enough damage counter against a V-Star anyways because they have uh, about 7 damage counters on the V-Star on the bench. If they have a V-Star on the bench, they would have at least 7 damage counters on it after playing double Eevee Cry and they would have at least... Eight, uh, four Pokemons in play with seven damage counters on them and that would essentially almost be enough for us to do the V-Star knockout after finishing off the first VMAX but all we need is to transfer with painful spoons from the Pokemon that we don't need damage counters on onto that V-Star and then hit it with our worst gift for the knockout. So if they have for example the V-Star in the active though and the VMAX on the bench we need to be doing a boss on the VMAX first. If we can't do the boss on the VMAX make sure you target a Pokemon, make sure you transfer the damage counter onto the VMAX 
away from the V-Star in the active so that you are actually not able to knock out the V-Star. If you're not knocking out the V-Star, that means you have a lot more damage counters in play for you to do the knockout on another VMAX on the next turn. Unless they heal their Pokemon, of course. But if they don't heal, we do have one Dina Tree heal to lock them up from healing their Pokemon as well. Uh, any Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponent. But if they don't heal their Pokemon, on the next turn, you can kill any Pokemon basically because you have more than enough damage counters in play for, say, 300 plus or even 400 plus damage with our Mimikyu doing worst gift for the second strike and that actually sets us up for the win because we actually all we need after that is just one shimmering star and one painful spoons uh, we can collect the knockout uh, on the same V star that we did damage on previously with our first Mimikyu we can finish off that Pokemon later with our Alakazam once we did the first knockout with our Mimikyu with our second one because if we need enough damage counters to finish off the second Pokemon we should be keeping the first one alive so that we actually can collect the knockout later on using our Radiant Alakazam's Painful Spoons ability by transferring from the other Pokemon that already has damage counters on it, targeting the Pokemon with damage counters for the knockout, while also killing off the active Pokemon with our Shimmering Star for only one Psychic Energy if they have exactly 4 damage counters on their active, we are doing an instant knockout with our V-Star power. So that essentially gives us a multi-price draw, finishing off the game by doing a double V knockout or a double EX knockout. To set up our bench, we're playing 3 Vapor Pass, 4 Level Ball, 2 Nest Ball, 2 Hisu and Heavy Ball, and 2 Fog Crystal to get either our basic Psychic Energy or our basic Psychic Pokemon into our hand. To search for Howlucha, we have Great Ball, Level Ball, and also Ultra Ball. We're playing 4 copies of Ultra Ball, 2 Great Ball, and 1 Jack to get our evolutions. We also can search for evolutions using Arvin, uh, including an Experience Share into our hand. We're playing nothing but Experience Share for the tool card for this deck. We also have our Switch Cards for the item. We can also search for our VIP on the first turn if we go second. Search Searching for two basic Pokemon to bench early using Arvin since we are playing two copies for this deck. We have also our Thornton obviously for Howlucha to transform into Mimikyu as we said earlier. Three copies, we have one Raihan to satisfy the attack cost. If we can actually bench Mimikyu, uh, if we are allowed to bench our second copy, we should be benching our second one uh, if we have it in our hand. If we don't, we can actually search for it using uh, our Heavy Ball and then bench it to play a Raihan later on in the game after the first one gets knocked out or even play an Experience Share on it to retrieve the energies onto the second and once we actually get to play uh, our worst gift twice in a row to do a double V knockout before doing our Shimmering Star to finish off the game. Finally, we're also playing one boss, one Serena, one Team Yells Cheer to shuffle back three and a combination of our Pokemon and supporters, one Gib Job Bug to place extra damage counters into the game, one Dina True Heal to lock our opponent from healing their Pokemons, one Peonia to get our evolutions from the prize, and one Manaphy for the bench barrier. So that's all for the deck list. Now let's go for some gameplay and see how well this deck works. Alrighty, so first game we're up against Kirin VMAX with Kyogre. They got Aqua Storm for the bench snipe with, uh, I forgot the attack, but Kirin VMAX can actually do a one hit knockout, uh, you know, discarding, doing 60x damage for each discarded energy in addition to 120 base, which is a lot. So they just need to discard three energies to kill a V Star. If they discard four, they can kill a VMAX, I think. Pretty sure. Uh, 50x damage, my bad. It's only 50x damage for each discarded water. You can discard a water, any water energy from this Pokemon though. Only on, only from the Kirin V Max that you're attacking with. Uh, and you're doing only 50x damage for each discarded energy. But that would actually be enough to kill a V Star if you have a Choice Bell attached or, you know, Vitality Band even. So it's definitely a very solid deck, originating from one of the Japanese players uh, from the tournament, just because it's actually showcased in HoHo -Ho News. If you guys check out that site, uh, you can find a Kieran VMAX list with Primordial Altar. I feel like that's the best one uh, yet. Uh, there are a couple lists without that stadium, but with that stadium though, you can actually look at the top card of your deck and choose to discard it. If it's not a water energy, you can discard it, increasing your chances of discarding, of attaching more energies using your Glaciator World ability multiple times with your Curia MV Max. So playing that stadium, I feel, is the smartest strategy for Curia MV Max. Uh, but you have to be a bit careful though because you are discarding a lot of cards from your deck with not just the Primordial Altar, with not just the Stadium, but also with your ability since you're stacking every single turn uh, for multiple discards, attaching multiple energies for you to do big damage with not just Kyogre, but also your Kyurem. And since Kyurem needs constant energy supply, since you are discarding the energy for the uh, for the damage boost, you actually need to keep on using his ability and keep on discarding cards from the top deck. So I feel like you may need Pokestop though. Pokestop actually helps you get dig for the items, so they actually can recycle your energy at some point. 
uh, there isn't any supporter cards right now that allows you to shuffle back uh, energy cards, uh, you know, up to five copies, for example, into the deck. We have nothing but energy recycler, which is an item, and you can actually play Luminion uh, for an item card. So you can still do cards like Arvin, Forest Seal Stone to search for the uh, energy recycler for you to play your ability more times and attack uh, for the last knockout, stuff like that, just to save yourself from the deck out, right? I don't think there's a huge mill deck in standard right now. There's nothing but Walk Trio, and that's not really that powerful at the moment until Reversal Energy comes out. Blunder Policy actually does work really well with it though, just because you are uh, increasing your chances of flipping more heads if you uh, have that tool card attached. Because they don't really want you to flip a Tails drawing three cards, right? If you flip a Tails for any of the three coins, you got a triple draw for you to attach more energies on the next turn with your Cherim. So I feel like Walk Trio is still pretty powerful, but I don't think flipping coins every turn, uh, you know, you may actually get unlucky enough, even with the tool card attached, you may not be able to flip enough coins for you to discard enough cards for you to win the game. But if you're up against a, you know, a deck that discard their own po their own cards, like uh, Tyranitar or even Kirin VMAX, you actually stand a pretty good chance at winning, since they are doing half of the work for you. If they are smart though, they could choose not to discard any cards from their top deck because Kyurem actually has enough base damage to knock out the Walk Trio without having to discard any energies from itself. They can even do Bench Knight with Kyogre to finish off the Cherubim on the bench if they don't play Manaphy or if they don't get it in time. So we actually got our Manaphy for this game early which is uh, great but we aren't... You know, we got the level ball for the Metaphy, and that means we can't actually play the Haulucha for the damage counter, and now we have not enough damage in the game. So we didn't actually attack on the last turn, just because we had to bench the Metaphy instead of Haulucha. And Eerie Cry doesn't actually allow you to place any damage counter on your opponent's Pokemon unless they have any damage counters on it. So it only does 3 damage counter on each of our opponent's Pokemon that already has damage counters on them. And since right now they have no damage counters on any of their Pokemon, we are doing 0 damage. 0 damage counter placement. So, we're gonna attach the energy first to draw cards with the B Barrel. <clears throat> Let's hope we get a level ball or nest ball at least for something. Uh, we should be getting Spectriere though. If we got Spectriere on the last turn instead of the Braviary, we could have done uh, 2 damage counter placement at least on the Kyogre and one of the bench Pokemon. And then uh, start to slowly spread the damage counter with our Alakazam later on in the game. While also thinking about evolving our first Braviary to start spreading some damage counters. So we actually had to do Singe on this turn just to get some damage in the game at least. Sadly, we didn't get our Haulucha or you know our Spectriere to place damage counters on them. Even if we get the Spectriere, we don't actually uh, get to use the attack because we attach the energy onto Mimikyu just to draw more cards. So we were expecting to get our Haulucha with the B Barrel, but we got our Typhlosion instead, which isn't actually too bad because at least we got two damage counter right now. For us to start spreading with our Alakazam on the next turn, we should be playing Haulucha though. But if they do a boss right now to knock out one of our bench, um, or if they kill the Menaphy right now, it will be pretty bad. If they do a boss right now, they can do Surf for a knockout, and then we would have extra one bench spot for us to do uh, not just the Haulucha's flying entry, but also play our Painful Spoons to spread the damage, placing 12 damage counters in total with our first Eerie Cry. So it's always better to play double bravery to spread enough damage counters using Eerie Cry twice before actually doing your first worst gift. Mimikyu is not able to do enough damage with this attack. If you have not collected enough damage counters on your opponent's field, make sure you do that first. Uh, worst gift is only doing 10x damage for each damage counter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. Okay, here comes the Aquarium. Okay, not enough energy to attack though, so we are safe with our bravery. They gave us quite a lot of turns because they are discarding, uh, you know, they are relying on chance for them to get the energies by discarding the top uh, to top deck, and they only have three Kyurem VMAXs in play, so they are not playing Melanie or any other way to attach energy onto the Kyurem. So I feel like they need uh, energy search, Pokestop, something to get more energies into their hand, so they can actually attach from their hand as well. Because uh, they are not actually able to get enough energies early. Eventually though, they would have enough energies every single turn. Uh, at some point in the game, they would be able to keep on attaching energies non-stop. So we do have to watch out for that. 
So here comes our first Halucha doing flying entry for extra damage counters on the bench. We're gonna hit the Kyurem VMAX, both the Kyuriems, and start smashing with our first Eerie Cry. So we have no uh, no Rufflet on the bench right now. So if we want to play our second Bravery, we better be doing we better be getting our uh, Thornton soon. If we Thornton the Haulucha into a Rufflet, we can evolve the second Bravery to play Eerie Cry another time before doing our first Worst Gift. Uh, getting enough damage in a game before doing the first VMAX Knockout. And then for the second VMAX Knockout, we can do our Shimmering Star uh, to instantly kill off the second VMAX if they have exactly 4 damage counters on it. So obviously we need Alakazam at some point in the game. Because if we have 7 damage counters on the second Curium, it would actually take a lot of time before we can transfer them away until it has 4 damage counters remaining. Would take a couple turns. So I don't think we have enough damage spread it on their Pokemons. So they are doing their first knockout already. There we go. Uh, we definitely need to play either the Mimikyu right now or uh, the Thornton. I feel like it would be better for us to attack with the Mimikyu right now. But I don't know. Are we able to get the Thornton on the Haulucha? If we can get the Thornton... We're not able to draw that many cards though. I don't think we would be able to dig out the Thornton that easily. We should be dig we should still be searching for it. But we actually played the Nest Ball for another Rufflet. I don't know why I did that. We should be playing Nest Ball for the Alakazam and then attack with the Mimikyu right now. To do 130 damage. We're not doing a lot of damage, but our second hit though can do a lot. We can actually do a 260 to basically put pressure on one of the VMAX even if they attack with the second one. We got enough damage in the game for us to play the second Bravery for the knockout. So if we do another Eerie Cry late game after doing the second Worst Gift, we would have enough damage counter to kill off the first VMAX. And all we need is the Alakazam and Shimmering Star to kill off the second VMAX for the win. So the V-Star power gives us a second VMAX knockout late game. And that's all we need. Two knockouts is all we need to win this game. Uh, we don't need a lot. Against an EX or a V-Star deck, we need triple knockout. And we need to time our attacks well. But against a VMAX deck, we don't really need to worry too much. We just need to kill the first one with our Mimikyu. And, our, and the second one with our Typhlosion V-Star. And we're good to go. So if they kill off the Typhlosion with a boss, we got our Thornton to evolve our first V-Star. We even have our Team Yells cheer to shove back our Pokemons. So we don't really need to worry too much. Be careful not to evolve your V-Star too early though, because if you get it knocked out, you have to play the supporter just to shuffle it back and somehow search for it again. We only have 4 Ultra Balls and 2 Great Balls to search for the V-Star, and we're only playing one copy, so make sure you uh, time your evolutions right as well. If you evolve it too early, you may not be able to dig, you know, you may not be able to evolve immediately after on the next turn. If you need it on the next turn, you may not be able to get it that easily after shuffling it back. Because you actually can't play your Arvin for the Ultra Ball if you do Team Yell's Shear to shuffle back the Pokemon. We have no rods for this deck. We're not allowed to play any rods for Standard right now. We got Super Rod back in the game, uh, back in Standard for the next set, which is which I'm very happy about, obviously, because it's an item that allows you to shuffle back your Pokemon, and I'm all up for it. Uh, there is no item at the moment that allows you to recycle your Pokemon, which is a very, very sad fact. We have nothing but Team Yell's Cheer, Miriam, and Clara to retrieve our Pokemons, which I feel is not enough. You need an item. Come on. So it appears that they actually took the bait and killed off the Haulucha in the active without doing an escape rope or a boss. So I feel like Kieran VMAX is kind of bad just because they have no access to the boss. They could actually do Luminion or Radiant Greninja to draw out the boss, uh, you know, and maybe Cross Receiver as well. But Radiant Good Ninja is not drawing a lot of cards, and they may need Luminous Sign for the Adventurous Discovery instead of the boss. So they only got one or two shots with the Luminion because they need to bench a lot of Pokemons, obviously. They need to stack the VMAX ability, and that means they, they need up to four copies of the VMAX in play, or at least three every single turn, for them to play the ability every, uh, every time. And they also need the Stadium cards because Path to the Peak is going to shut down Kyurem VMAX's ability, so there are a lot of counters against Kyurem. And it's not really that solid just because they don't have access to the boss at the right time. They could actually do Serena, but that means they can't target EXs on a bench. 
Escape Room is definitely gonna help though just because they cannot just force you to switch your Pokemon They can switch out into the Kyogre or into another QM to attack with uh, you know to do another big knockout or a bench knife So switching their Pokemon could actually be necessary because they don't actually have the retreat condition They can't really retreat right now um, If they play the Kyurem VMAX in the active they have to wait for the they have to wait for their opponent to knock it out before they're allowed to play another Pokemon so that's the bad thing about Kyurem, they don't have the switch option, they don't have the boss. It's quite difficult to play it honestly. They can actually do Forest Seal Stone to search for the boss as well, I forgot about that. Um, but they can't actually play it that many times. So we finally got our second Bravery. We got enough damage counters right now, at last. Uh, we even got Alakazam in play. So let's hope, fingers crossed, they don't kill off the Mimikyu this turn. If they don't do a boss right now, you never know if they have a boss in their hand. Greninja could quite automatically just draw out the boss, you never know. Um, let's hope they discard the boss with their Glaciated World. But if they kill off the Mimikyu, we have to somehow play a Raihan with the Switch. We got a Fog Crystal in our hand, let's hope we can dig for the Raihan. And somehow uh, play the worst gift for our first VMAX knockout. For the second one though, we need to somehow play the Typhlosion. So Typhlosion can also do Hollow Flames by the way, hitting 180 damage to the active, plus 3 damage control in any way you like onto the bench. Uh, and that means you got more spreaded damage for you to hit more damage with your Mimikyu later on. So if we don't have enough damage right now, we can actually play Typhlosion first and then do Mimikyu later. But I feel like we should be saving Typhlosion for the V-Star power. If you save it on the bench for too long though, they may just do a boss. So make sure you don't evolve it until you get your Thornton. Make sure you only do the evolution at the last second. Because your V-Star is super precious. If you shuffle it back, it's very difficult to, you know, retrieve it, to search for it back into your hand, to evolve it within the single within the same turn. It's not that easy. Even with V-Barrel, honestly. So for this game, we got stuck for a couple turns, not being able to do Bravery's attack, uh, Eevee Cry at the right time, the, uh, you know, as early as we like. Just because we need to bench the Menifee, we couldn't actually use Halucha's Flying Entry as early as possible, but we could have done Spectre Air though. If we played our cards right, we could have done Night Footsteps first, because we actually have it in the deck. We could have Ultra Ball, uh, our first Ultra Ball should have been for a... Uh, Spectriere instead of the Rufflet, and that actually guarantees us more damage counters in the game. So we can actually bench the Rufflet later, because we don't actually need uh, the Bravery that early. If we don't have enough damage counters, we shouldn't be playing our Eerie Cry. So we should be doing Night Footsteps for our first attack if we can. If we go second, that would be ideal. And then use Alakazam to spread the damage before we get our Haolucha into our hand, because it's not actually that easy to get it out. We do have four level balls, but we may need it for the mana fee. And that's the reason we should be using our Spectriar first. So we definitely didn't think things through for this game. If we were smart enough, we would have done Night Footsteps for our first attack. You know, but oh well. We're learning from our mistakes, I guess. It may actually be better as well for us to swap out an Arvan for an Irida, because that actually guarantees us not just uh, the Menifee on the bench, but also an, a level ball for us to play the Haolucha a lot faster. You can also think about playing Spinda as well, uh, from the same set as Bravery. I forgot what expansion Bravery is from, I think Lost Origin. But it allows you Spinda to basically hit 10 damage on each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, including their bench. But it is damage though on the bench, and they could have a Mana Fee protecting all damage on their bench Pokemons. Uh, with your Spectre Air, you are placing damage counters on two of their Pokemon, and you are placing two damage counters, which means you can spread the damage counters onto a different Pokemon with your Alakazam later on, uh, which could actually be better because you are getting past Manaphy's ability. So here comes our first Alakazam. We're going to transfer as much from that Kyurem because we want to be targeting that with Serena later on to do a uh, knockout with our Shimmering Star. So if they don't kill off our Typhlosion, we got the Serena to kill off the second Kyurem on the bench. And then we can transfer onto the first VMAX, onto this one in the active right now, using Alakazam to knock out uh, not to not just knock out the first VMAX, but also to reduce the damage counters on the second VMAX down to exactly four for us to play Shimmering Star for a straight knockout. So we got double VMAX knockout, drawing all six prizes in a single turn. If they don't kill our Typhlosion right now, we're all good. 
Uh, they could actually do a Cologne on the mana fee though, with the Aqua Storm. You never know what's gonna happen. They could actually play Irida for Cross Witcher and Cologne. Uh, that could actually be a legit bench snipe deck. We had uh, Shady Dealings for the Cross Witcher uh, for pre-rotation, but now that Shady Dealings is rotated out, I don't think many people is playing Cologne for bench snipe decks anymore. Because I guess the consistency is quite hard to achieve. You not only need to do the boss on the mana fee, you also need to play the Cologne uh, at the right time. You need to search for that item using Irida. If you play Irida, you can't do a boss. And that means you need to play uh, maybe Darkrai V-Star's ability, Star Abyss, just to search for a double item to play the Cross Switcher. We still have Pokemon Catcher though, but it is obviously a coin flip card and nobody likes the gamble. Uh, so here comes Typhlosion and our Serena. We got Serena in our hand to basically kill off one VMAX in the active. We even have our Alakazam's ability to transfer for the knockout. So we got straight off six prize draw in a single turn. Winning the game by killing off two VMAX in a row, which is crazy. So we got three prize right now. We actually did Peonia though, I think. And we're trying to draw out the right cards. We got the Thornton, but we don't actually need it, do we? We just need to play the Serena. So make sure you are aware of the supporter count. You are only allowed to play one supporter, obviously, per turn. And if you do Thornton, you can't actually play any other supporter cards. So make sure you do the boss at the right time. Do not play any other supporter if you need to play the Serena or boss. So we got our second knockout using the V-Star power with Shimmering Star. Doing a insta-kill with our... Uh, effect of attack. Isn't that crazy? Our special V-Star power, nobody ever uses Shimmering Star for meta and we are actually pulling it off right now, killing off a powerful meta top tier deck, Kirin VMAX with Kyogre, with nothing but Typhlosion V-Star. Can you imagine that? Typhlosion. What are the weakest V-Stars right now? Which we actually managed to pull off and I'm so happy about that. So right now we're up against a Gardevoir EX, the craziest meta right now that I know that everyone is either using or super frustrated with. <laughs> it's just way too broken in my opinion. Unlimited energy with Psychic Embrace and you got basically unlimited draw support. You can freely discard your energy with Curlius. Uh, refinement and you can also draw even more cards with your Shining Arcana, Radiant Good Ninja is just insane. The draw support is off the charts. Um, the energy synergy is just off the charts as well. It's so easy. You don't. It's almost like you don't even need to try. The, the, that's what the game is right now. They don't even like. If you are playing a God of War EX, you honestly do not need to even fucking try to win every game that you it's insane it's in i've seen people like sail through the game making so many mistakes with the god of war ex deck and still manage to win the game at the last second i don't know how they managed to pull it off they got sky seal stone against v stars they got a uh, mewtwo v union against one prize deck it's just madness like what are you kidding me it's so easy they even have Cresselia to clean up the damage counters. Cresselia is pretty smart though. Whoever thought of that hats off to them. But I feel like it's still <laughs> almost like a dumb bitch deck, isn't it? It's like a dumb bitch deck, obviously. So stupid, I mean. <laughs> so we got Spectriar for our first hit. Um, we even have the Gate Jaw. So even if we got just one Pokemon, all we need is just one Pokemon that they put from their hand onto the bench with our Stadium in play. We got extra one Pokemon with damage counters on it. And two damage counters allows us to transfer that onto a different Pokemon with our Alakazam. And that means we just need one Haolucha on the next turn. If we haven't already played our Spectriar, we can actually just pull out one Haolucha with our Bravery hitting 120 damage. Sorry, 12 damage counters in a single turn for our first strike. And in our next strike, we actually get to hit 15 damage counters, allowing us to kill off a V-Star with our Mimikyu later on in the game, or even a V-Max. Because we would have essentially 7 damage counters on at least 4 of their Pokemons on the bench, including the active. And that means we are hitting 280 damage with our Mimikyu's worst gift attack. 
Uh, and 280 damage is actually enough to kill off a VMAX if it already has 7 damage counters on it. It's enough to kill off a Guja V Star as well. Because we have Painful Spoons to basically transfer 2 damage counters from the bench onto the Guja. Uh, since we are only hitting 200 damage uh, minus the Rolling Irons reduction, we are only hitting 270. And we would need to transfer 1 damage counters onto the Guja to knock it out with Worst Gift. So here comes the first Curlia. They are playing Gardevoir EX with Mewtwo V-Star, which is a very different flavor for any Gardevoir EX players. Um, I actually comment that for playing something different. We actually did that combo though. We played, uh, we posted a video on Gardevoir EX with Mewtwo V-Star using Meow Stick for the damage counter transfer as well. So we played Meow Stick with Mewtwo, the reason being Mewtwo has 280 HP for a V-Star, which is pretty high, and Meow Stick allows you to transfer the damage counter from your Mewtwo onto any one of your opponent's Pokemon, including their bench, uh, basically topping off for the knockout, because Mewtwo is not exactly doing a one-hit KO against a V-Star, it's only doing 270 damage with uh, the Psy Purge, it's doing 90x3, uh, maximum 270 damage is not quite enough to kill off Dialga, for example, Palkia V-Star. You need an extra 1 damage counters, or at least a choice belt. And instead of choice belt, we have our Meow Stick to not just place damage counters on our opponent's Pokemon, but also transfer from our Pokemon. And that means we are recovering at least 1 or 2 damage counters from our Pokemon using uh, up to 2 copies of Meow Stick in play. So obviously Meow Stick is a stage 1, Mewtwo V-Star is an evolution, uh, God of War EX is a stage 2. It, it is a lot to handle, but we are playing so much draw support in the deck, we have so many draw engines, and that actually allows us to play our level ball friendly Meow Stick uh, for the ability. Because we don't really need the ability that early, we can quite easily evolve it late game to use, uh, you know, to use the ear moves to basically add on some damage counters, topping off for the knockout. So, uh, they have Zacian though instead for this deck, because Zacian works really well against V-Stars, V-Maxes, with Sky Seal Stone, obviously. So playing a V-Star means they are actually allowed to attach the tool card onto the V-Star instead of having to wait for the Zacian before they're allowed to attach the Seal Stone uh, to play the Star Order. So, if they attach the tool card too early onto the Zacian, your opponent may just do a Lost Vacuum to remove the Stadium, uh, to remove the tool card from your Zacian before actually allowed to use Star Order at the right time. And since you don't have the space for that many copies of your tool card, you should be saving it for the last minute right if you keep it in your hand for too long your opponent could actually do a judge so you never know what's gonna happen if you attach it in play onto your Mewtwo it could actually be easier to play the V-Star power uh, just because if you you know you don't really need to bench the Zacian first before playing the tool card you can play the tool card and then use the Zacian later on in the game so that's the plus side of playing a V-Star in a God of War EX deck or any VMAX V we're gonna have a replacement for Zacian for the next set though, Drifloon with the Charm of Courage. Hitting 300 damage with uh, only 5 energies. All you need is 5 energies on Drifloon uh, with Psychic Embrace to place up to 10 damage counters on it. With the Charm of Courage tanking up to uh, 120 damage. Uh, having up to 120 HP on your Drifloon allows you to tank 11 damage counters to do a maximum of 330 damage. But since Gardevoir is only placing 2 damage counters at a time, you are only, are only able to hit 300 damage with your Drifloon unfortunately. But you could quite easily just play Drifloon later on in the game uh, to basically collect the knockout on 2 different VMAXs or 2 different EX by playing your damage counter placement. Uh, putting 8 damage counter on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like for 3 psychic costs. You may think that Drifloon is not good against Lost Box Sabli, but all they need to do is attach as little energy, place as little damage counters on the Drifloon, because they just need 4 damage counters to kill off any Pokemon in play, a Cramorant for example. They don't need a lot of damage counters on the Drifloon, but Sabli still is able to knock out 2 Drifloons in a row, as long as they have enough damage counters on them. If they don't have enough Charm of Courage attached to both uh, Drifloon, they even have Lost Vacuum to remove the tool card as well. So I feel like God of War EX's best bet is to attack with the EX instead of the Drifloon if they want to win against a Lost Box. Because Sabla can easily finish off any low HP one price Pokemon, so you do have to be extra careful with your Curlias on the bench as well. 
But Gardevoir EX could actually choose to play Picnic Basket or more Jellies now uh, to recover damage from the Curlia, for example, if they choose to spread the damage counters. Uh, they just, they can only place 12 at a time. And so if they place 8 damage counters on one of the Curlias and 4 on the other one, you got only 4 damage counters on the Rods or Curlia. And all you need to do is attach a Emergency Jelly to recover all damage counters from it. Uh, recovering after attaching enough energies, obviously, uh, to basically get more energies in the game while denying them the damage counter knockout. So right now, they have Mewtwo in the active, and they're actually going to kill off the Bibaro with the boss. They got Transfer Break for 160 damage, more than enough to kill off our first Bibaro, and there goes our draw support. We do have the Thornton though, so all we need is the Ultra Ball or a Great Ball, somehow to evolve our next Bibero. We are obviously going to have to Thornton for the Bidoof by transforming the Haolucha back into the draw support. And that actually allows us to play another Haolucha. So we got a couple turns to dig for the evolution for us to play Industrious Incisor all over again. Just because we don't actually need anything right now for us to attack with Braviary. So we got a couple turns to spare before we bring out our next Bibero. So here comes Transfer Break. They're going to transfer one energy from the Mewtwo while attacking. They are actually forced to do that though. They have to move one energy from the Mewtwo V uh, back onto one of their bench. Helping them charge up the Zacian for a big knockout. If they attack with their V though, they are giving Miraidon free 2 prize on the next turn. So I feel like they should be evolving as fast as they, as they can. Uh, just to play the V-Star attack for big damage. And also tanking enough damage to deny their opponent 2 prize. Uh, that early. Miraidon can actually hit 280 though with the Reggie Lackey, so they gotta be extra careful. Miraidon is crazy right now because it's super fast, and all they need is to evolve two Elakis on a bench to kill off any V Star with one hit. So this game is more about speed than anything. If you can draw the prizes faster than your opponent, you win the game. If you can do faster knockouts, you win the game. If you can set up a lot faster, if you can pull out your ability support faster, you have the advantage. So anyways, we're going to Thornton for the Bidoof right now. And just wait for the evolution. We, we even have the Raihan ready to go. So we can retreat to discard the energy and play the Raihan on the Mimikyu uh, for the Bibero. While attacking with the worst gift, we got our not just our first knockout, but also our draw support into the game. So Raihan is definitely a good uh, support because it helps you search for the evolution, it helps you search for a switch card or even the energy, whatever you need at the right time. Obviously, we need the Bibero right now, which is the crucial card to help us, uh, you know, to maintain our draw support, keeping us in the game. So are they going to evolve the Mewtwo at last? Probably. Or are they just going to play another transfer break? You never know because against a one price deck, uh, it's it could actually be better for them not to evolve, but since we have Mimikyu in play already, they should be thinking about tanking as much damage. Um, they could actually play Picnic Basket at some point though, so Gardevoir EX with Picnic Basket could be quite terrible if you're doing a spread deck, especially with Bravery, placing only 3 damage counters at a time. Uh, they are healing everything, reversing the damage counter placement on your uh, with your Bravery by using just one Picnic Basket. They may choose to play Emergency Jelly instead, and that actually gives them a lot less recovery um, on their Pokemon. But let's just hope they don't heal their Pokemon, because they are playing a V-Star with Gardevoir EX, you never know. Um, they could actually choose not to play those cards. So they did Avery, now we're forced to discard two Pokemons. I think we're just going to discard the Rufflet and something else. I feel like we don't need the Rufflet anymore. Um, probably the Spectriere, because we need the Bidoof, we need the Alakazam, definitely need the Mimikyu, so I'm not really too sure what to discard. It's quite frustrating that they actually did Avery on us. <laughs> We're kind of forced to discard the Rufflet. So we actually survive the Bibarel knockout with our Raihan and Thornton, uh, but are we going to survive the Avery? Are we going to be able to survive the Avery? We'll see. As if God of War isn't broken enough, they're going to play Avery as well to disrupt one price decks by destroying their bench. So if one price decks require supports like Flaffy, Cherim, or, you know, uh, there's no more Frostmoth for standard, but they could actually require uh, Bibarel, Scovet, 
And Archeops, they can quite easily just disrupt those, uh, you know, remove your bench supports by playing Avery, and then you got nothing left. What are you going to do after that? Uh, one press deck has Milotic though, to basically deny them the bench, bench disruption with Avery, and also the hand disruption with uh, Judge. We have no more Marnie, but they can still uh, block them from, you know, shuffling your hand. You can block your opponent from shuffling your hand with Dew Guard, blocking off Judge's effect. They can still shuffle their hand and draw cards, obviously, but they can't force you to shuffle your hand. Okay, we got another energy on the second Mimikyu, which is great. Um, are we going to be able to knock out the first one? I think so. Let's just transfer from the Mewtwo, because we already got the knockout. Let's transfer from the Mewtwo onto the bench, and that allows us to target... You know, more Pokemons with another Braviary. If we are planning on using e Cry a third time, I don't think we need it. So if we play Mimikyu the second time, we just need to somehow Thornton for the Typhlosion and do Shimmering Star for a final knockout. Shimmering Star has to be against an EX though, right? Obviously, because we don't want to be wasting a V-Star power to knock out a one prize Pokemon. Uh, you just need one energy to kill off any Pokemon, even a VMAX, even an EX. Uh, for, you know, four damage counters, if they have exactly four damage counters. That is the condition that you need to satisfy, but that's all it takes for you to do a straight knockout for one energy. Which is pretty powerful, if you ask me. And nobody ever recognizes how strong uh, that V-Star power actually is. You get a free knockout, like, come on. It's almost better than Star Requiem, Giratina V-Star, just because you don't actually need to lose that many cards before you're allowed to play that V-Star power. You just need exactly 4 damage counters on your opponent's active. So the condition is obviously different, but I feel like it's a lot easier to satisfy Typhlosion's condition than Giratina's, because losting 10 cards obviously takes a lot more time, and I feel like Typhlosion is an underrated V-Star right now. So they're actually going to finish off the Alakazam right now, and we have to pull up the Thornton to play Painful Spoons last minute to kill off the Mewtwo V-Star in the active. So for our next strike, our next Mimikyu is not going to be able to kill off the Mewtwo V-Star in the active right now, but we can actually, uh, you know, keep more damage counters, add more damage counters into the game for us to kill off another V-Card on the next turn, possibly a God of War EX even with a boss, and then... Uh, we can actually finish off the Mewtwo with either Shimmering Star or even just by playing the Thornton for Painful Spoons. We just need to transfer two more damage counters onto the Mewtwo V Star to finish off the game by killing off our third V Pokemon. So right now we're going to play the Peonia to get some cards from the prize. Uh, we want to be putting the VIP back. Uh, putting the VIP into the prize allows us to draw more cards with B-Barrel obviously. So I feel like we should be putting them back right now and play out the other uh, trainer cards that we have in our hands so that we get to draw as many with B-Barrel. Digging for that Thornton for the last minute kill using Painful Spoons for a delicious knockout. So we got Boss to target one of the Zashin Vs or God of EX on a bench uh, with our second Mimikyu and then we have either Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star or our Alakazam with the Thornton to basically finish off the first V-Star, the Mewtwo that we are damaging right now. We can use Damage Counter Transfer for the last knockout, winning the game against a God of War EX which would be super cool. So let's see if we can somehow dig for the Thornton because that's the only supporter that we need. We literally don't need anything else. We got the energy in our hand, we got Experience Share attached to the Mimikyu, we have enough to win the game. Um, we have the boss in our hand as well to target the Zashin. Just need to wait for the Thornton. Seems like a very clear win. I'm quite surprised because they actually did a lot to disrupt our strategy though. They kill off our first B-Barrel, did Avery, knocked out our Alakazam, denying us the Painful Spoon's ability every single turn. And that's actually very very bad because we have to, we're forced to transfer over and over from one of the different Pokemons to another one, allowing us to keep the damage counter low on one Pokemon while the other one as high as possible. So that we got easy knockouts with Mimikyu for the first V and easy knockout with Typhlosion for the second or the third one with Shimmering Star. 
So I think I'm just going to end the voice right here and leave you guys for silent gameplay. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Today we have our Hisuian Bravery with Mimikyu combo, spreading damage control with our Eerie Cry, and then play our Mimikyu late game for a massive knockout doing worst gift, hitting 10x damage for each damage control on all of our opponent's Pokemon combined. And then we actually get to do another Mimikyu with a Raihan or a Thornton by charging up a Haolucho on a bench, doing a surprise transformation for free for another worst gift for an our second V or second EX knockout, drawing four prizes in two turns and then late game we can play our Hisuian Typhlosion V-Star with the Thornton with our second Thornton to use the V-Star power for the final knockout so we can play Shimmering Star for only one energy if they have exactly four damage controls on their active EX or VMAX we can do a straight knockout during the last remaining prizes with the V-Star power for a delicious scoop so that's all for this video hope you guys enjoyed it we'll see you next time have a great day and bye from the people enjoy life
Thank you.